All right, now we're going to learn about fine tuning. Uh, and as of recording this video, it literally just came out yesterday, so you're getting this fresh. The API for OpenAI's 3.5 model uh, is pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, and they have uh, some details on the, their documentation and also the blog post where they uh, came out with fine tuning as well. I've uh, just followed along with the example here, but I'm going to explain to you what's happening at each stage. The first thing you need to do is get your data into the right format. If you're following along here, you can make a copy of this. My data from my blog is here and you can open that up. And I'll just show you what that looks like. This is the format. So it's called JSON L. Uh, which is like JSON, except every object is on its own line. So you can see there's no parent object. And it just is a list of messages. So the messages are the system message. I've just kept that default, but if you are testing fine tuning for yourself, you already have a prompt that's working in the system message, you might want to use that prompt here. I've just gone with the default. Then I think it takes a lot of experimentation, but you might get better results if you update the system message. Equally, I've just used this really simple prompt, which is I write the section and then the section header for the blog post and then the blog title. What I've done is I split, I you know, downloaded all 48 of my blog posts. I split them into sections based on the section headers, the H1 tags. And then I've put the name of that section into into here and then the the blog title here like the ai is then responding so obviously the ai didn't really respond this is what i'm telling you it should have responded so that's how you're training it saying like when the user prompts like this then give me this type of content and my hope is going to train it to talk like me so that's the actual section text there so getting into this format is the first uh, challenge is actually like the you know probably the hardest thing what what i did actually is i cheated a little bit and i used code interpreter i'll just show you kind of how i did that i uploaded uh, the blog posts and then i just asked it to prep it into this format and i gave it one example i just said prep into the format write the section header for the blog post article title and make sure you cover all the blog posts in the csv and the format is like this i gave it one example i just took a section header why must agencies charge so much for one of my posts and then i pasted in that text manually cool it actually did all the work and i can include i'll include the code that it used so i asked it to actually so one thing is initially it had a bunch of html in there so i asked it to get rid of that but other than that it was it worked really well and I asked it to package up all the code. Uh, so I'll include this as a .py file. So uh, hopefully you should be able to just run this or you could give this to code interpreter and say, can you do that for, for, for my data? Cool. And then once you ask it to generate its output, you can click and save the, the file. Cool. Uh, so that's how you get the data in the right format. Uh, this is how you load my data. So if you just want to test, you can load this from this link. The, it's just extracting the file ID and then pulling the data and then saving it locally. And then this loads the data so you can see you have 304 observations. Typically with fine tuning, uh, what OpenAI says is you probably need at least 50 observations in order to start making noticing a difference in the model. And I've seen in a few papers that it's typically around like 200. 200 observations that you need in order to get to the point where fine tuning actually shows better results than just general prompt engineering. So I would say if you have 200 samples, then you're probably in a good position to start fine tuning. But if you're not in that position, then try and generate 200 samples manually by getting people to label them or you labeling them, or you could just use prompt engineering for now. And then once you get to 200 samples, uh, then you can do this uh, type of work. The the code here, basically I just need to get your uh, get the OpenAI key. You can paste that in there. You can get that in here, view API keys, and you can create a new one. And then this is the call to the OpenAI fine tune. I guess this specifically is like the files section. So uh, before it can fine tune on your data, it needs to have your data, right? So this is just a way of uploading that file to OpenAI. And this basically just splits it and opens it in a file path. And then, and then you get a response that says, here's the file ID. 
you know, how, is how big it is and it was uploaded. Now, one thing I found is that sometimes with larger files, it takes a while to upload. So if you try and run the rest of the code, it doesn't work. So I've added this section here, which is just checking on that file. And it just, if you run that, then, then it just um, finds the latest file that you uploaded. And then once it says processed, then you're pretty happy. Then you can keep running. Then, and then you start a fine tuning job. So again, pretty straightforward. Just call the fine tuning jobs API again with your open AI key. And it is recommended that you train on this GPT 3.5 Turbo uh, 0613. The reason is that it doesn't, they don't support GPT 4 fine tuning yet, although they said it's coming in the fall. Uh, you can also tune on to other models, but they're the older models like uh, GPT 2. Uh, so it's not really worth uh, messing with. Or well, at least, uh, you know, not for most of the tasks that I've found uh, helpful for. Cool. So when you call that, and then you get a job ID. Um, and you can see that like it's not finished yet uh, and it says status created and again you can just check the status so if you run that a few times like it will say like running if you scroll across and then eventually it'll say status succeeded and once it has succeeded then you can see how long it took in this case it took 24 minutes and then also you can calculate the price so you can calculate this ahead of time but the the cost for fine tuning is as uh, is a tenth of eight cents per one thousand tokens, so it cost me two dollars twenty two to train on these three hundred observations, and then you get the actual fine tune model itself. So uh, you can see that here. This is my specific code. It shows up in my account, and then you can just query it just like you otherwise would. And so this is just a normal query to to OpenAI, except I'm passing this new model name in. And if it's, I think it's really important that you keep the system message and the con and the prompt style the same, but I'm getting, I think, pretty good results. So this actually really does sound like me, I think, if I scroll back to the beginning. It uses a lot of the same kind of informal language, but quite direct, not much fluff. Yeah, like words like under the hood, I use that quite a lot. Yeah, here we go. I think I'm using figures and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's, I'm actually pretty impressed with the results. And then the other thing I think you should think about is like, this was asking it to a section that like it already trained on, but really you want to try and write a section that it hasn't trained on. So here's a topic that I have written about memetics. I actually wrote a whole book about memetics, but not, there's only like one blog post on memetics on my personal blog and it doesn't mention criticisms of memetics so this is like a tangential topic and i haven't written specifically this section like why isn't memetics a science so this is a better test and what i find is it still sounds like me it starts to quote different people i've never read but it's it's like doing it's still doing a pretty good job so i think that more testing needs to be done ideally what you would do is you would hold back some test data when you have the 300 or something samples if you held back like 10 15 percent of that and then you could feed in those prompts generate and see how well they did relative to the real task so uh, i would say that's good good you know that's a good idea really with any machine learning but but yeah that's how you're going to really tell whether it's done a good job you can also tell programmatically so there's like the evals functionality in langchain or in open ai you can do manual kind of um, blind thumbs up, thumbs down. Is, does it sound like me or not? Like sentence by sentence. You could also do embedding distance. You could calculate the vector for for the text, the reference text, the actual writing that I did, and then calculate the the embedding for the the text that the the fine tuned model generated, and then see what the difference is, see how close it gets. And you could try different fine tuning techniques. So you try with a different system message and see if that improves things and so on. So it is an iterative experimental process. The other thing to show you is that these models, there's not much interface, unfortunately, <laughs> with these things, but these models do show up. So if I refresh, and then you can see, I have my fine tunes that show up here. If I want to say the section uh, what is my favorite color just a random one to submit Let's see what it comes back with <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, so it doesn't always work. I think if it goes off off piece in terms of the examples, it doesn't do as good a job. Cool. The the other thing to talk about is pricing. Here we go for fine tuning. It costs like eight cents per thousand. Oh, less. Sorry, one tenth of eight cents per thousand tokens to train, and then it costs like uh, basically one cent for input and you know one and a half cent for output when you're talking to the model. So if you compare, this is what uh, GPT. Uh, 3.5 normally costs. So you can see that we're going from 0.0015 to 0.012. So it's an order of magnitude difference in terms of cost, but it's still pretty cheap, right? If you think about a GPT-4, that's three cents and six cents per token. And so you can, you're basically getting a much cheaper you know, much cheaper model than GPT-4. And what uh, a lot of people have been telling me is that you can get better results with a fine-tuned GPT-3.5 model for specific tasks than you can with a general GPT-4. So, it, you know, it depends how you position it. It's either a really expensive GPT-3.5 or like a really cheap GPT-4 replacement for some tasks. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is uh, useful for you guys. Again, this is like really new, so uh, this might change. Uh, but hopefully you understand the, the kind of thinking behind it and how it works. And uh, what's really great about this is it's pretty accessible. You don't have to be a machine learning engineer to do this. Like I'm certainly not. So <laughs> hopefully uh, you guys can experiment and, and find some interesting stuff.